Well, it's great to have your company for another series of Speakers Corner. And this is a very first programme, so a warm welcome to all of you. If you were wondering where we've been, well, we normally pop up for 12 weeks, two series a year, and this is the first of the year. So for the next 12 weeks, we have got a whole series of guests who are going to be talking about different topics that are close to their heart. And we really want you to get involved because if you're new to the channel or maybe even new to this uh, particular programme, it is all about viewer involvement. We'll be bringing up subjects, topics, and you can get involved by making your comments or you can be asking our guests any questions that you have. And you do that through text and email and we'll be putting up details right throughout the program as to how you can get involved well for the first program to open up a brand new series it had to be something fairly meaty and we're going to be starting off really asking a question were you educated or were you programmed and what I'd like to do before going any further is take a little look at this and we'll be back with our guests in just a tick To answer that question, we set up a hidden camera experiment to see if this woman would stand up at the sound of this tone, simply because everyone else is. You might be thinking you'd never go along with this. Or would you? After just three beeps, and without knowing why she's doing it, this woman is now conforming perfectly to the group. But what happens if we take the group away? Elaine, please. Okay, now she's alone, the crowd is gone, and nobody is watching her, except our hidden cameras. What do you think she'll do? She's now conforming to the rules of the group without them even being there. Now, watch what happens when we introduce another outsider who doesn't know the rules. Have a seat and they'll be out in just a couple minutes. Great, thanks. thanks so much. Think she'll teach the new guy what to do? We kept the cameras rolling as more unsuspecting patients arrived. And slowly but surely, what began as a random rule for this woman has now become the social norm for everyone in this waiting room. Here to explain what's going on in their brains is Jonah Berger of the University of Pennsylvania. This sort of internalized form of herd behavior is part of what we call social learning. Starting at a very early age, when we see members of our group perform a task, our brains literally reward us for following in their footsteps. When I saw everybody stand up, I felt like I needed to join them. Otherwise, I'm like excluded. Once I decided to go with it, then I felt much more comfortable. Conformity is how we become socialized, but it can also cause us to develop bad habits or repeat past wrongs. And it's why even this rebel who wasn't standing for any of this nonsense, eventually joined the ranks. I don't know if that made you smile or not, but seriously, the question, were we educated or were we programmed? Um, Philip Day, great to have you uh, here again. We missed you the last series, so uh, we could be booking you up 
basically as soon as we can get our hands on your diary, Philip. Always a pleasure to have you in the studio. It's great to be back. We're um, so opening up the series with this question, and um, I think probably regular viewers probably cottoned on to who would be sitting on the hot seat today actually talking about this. But for anybody new out there, what is it about this topic that you've chosen it to talk about tonight? Well, humans are just complex people. Um, and when we think about our own thought processes, it's just absolutely amazing. Now you put that into the context of um, how you can get populations moving in a certain direction, all following the same line. Um, H.L. Mencken, who's a great political commentator, said the whole aim of, of practical politics is to keep the population alarmed and hence clamorous to be led to safety by menacing them with an en endless series of hobgoblins, all of them imaginary. And of course, every day we read about the fear mongering that goes on in the newspapers. And it's a virtual world if you think about it, because I mean, a lot of what goes on uh, that we read about these horrific things don't impact us physically. Mm -hmm. They're just things that we wouldn't even know about. My grandmother used to say, it's not real until you can see it from your garden gate. Yeah. And here's a lady that went through two world wars. Yeah. So we have, a, we, we have a physical world we live in. That's the world, you know, the table. Um, and then- We can see it, we can touch it. And then there's this virtual thing going yeah. on. And people are still waiting for the zombie apocalypse. But uh, have you seen them walking down the high street now looking at their phones? <laughs> Almost <laughs> ran over three of those coming up here. <laughs> well, you know, all joking aside, um, if we've been programmed, whether it's only in specific areas, uh, that's quite serious. And that can have very, very serious ramifications in terms of what we accept, what we don't accept, how we interact with people, and really how we just generally do life. Obviously, this is a Christian television program, so we're going to be coming on um, to really who's behind all of this and what is the um, the end goal or the end result. But, you know, with the program, we, uh, as it unfolds, remember, you can actually text, you can email in your comments and your questions to Philip uh, Day. The details we'll be putting up regularly uh, right throughout the program. But you say, Philip, that we're in a spiritual war and um, that we're on enemy turf. And I think a lot of people would agree with you there. But, you know, for anybody, again, who's not familiar with what we're talking about here, what are some of the obvious aspects of this actual war? What can we see that lets us know that this is actually going on? Well, God's word tells us that, that um, Satan is the god of this world and it's his world system which then leads inquiring minds to say, well, why doesn't God just squish it and stop it immediately? And the answer is God's allowing it to happen because in my view, we're undergoing a training program under life our conditions um, to see how we exercise our free will. Let me look at it, I like to look at it this way, that the programming begins very early on. For instance, first time you're in a classroom, there you are, you're sitting down, teacher walks in, starts handing out the truth. Here's the truth about your history. Here's the truth about where you came from. Here's the truth about medicine and science. And notice that we don't question any of it because we've just been handed the truth and this is settled truth and why would teacher lie? And so from an early age, we're taught to fit in and not to challenge what we've been told is settled truth. So if you do challenge it, if ever anybody watching this program has ever got up in the class and said, well, actually, I don't really agree with this. What about blah, 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 blah? Then all of a sudden you're an idiot. You could be a moron. You could even be wicked, you know, because you're going against what this is. And this is quite serious when it gets into the realm of health because, uh, well, let me ask you a question now. Can humans lie? It has been known. It's known, it. okay. <laughs> Can been... politicians lie? Yes, that's, probably that's they, more than humans. Yeah, that's why they call it politics. Poly, many, ticks. <laughs> uh, can, here's, here's one, can science lie? Mm. Mm. Well, most people would say no because of the perception that they have about science. That there is a scientific method. Right? Yeah, and, and that science is, is clinical and it's like stainless steel and it's unbiased yeah. and it's kind of like cold hard facts. Yeah. In 2005, that was blown out of the, the window because it began to be revealed that corporate interests were hijacking scientific studies. Public Library of Science, uh, Scientific American have, have done extensive articles on this. So there's been a big problem with corporations taking over a lot of the uh, studies that we get to mm -hmm. hear, which is why many people watching this program will have noticed that there's a certain contradiction that goes on between one minute you know, uh, 
things are this way and then the next minute things are that way. But coming back to this whole idea of programming, um, if this is Satan's world, then we would expect the we would expect him to start getting people to doubt the wisdom of their senses. And this is exactly what we're going on uh, and what we're seeing right now. We're seeing examples of the war against or the rebellion against God's order would be war against the Jewish people again. Quite a bit of that's been making the newspapers recently. And that, How, doesn't, that doesn't really make sense, does it? Why would yeah, it? Yeah. I mean, out of all of the demographic groups, why go after those ones? Mm. Why, go after the, why go after Jewish people? How about this? What about the blurring of the sexes? Well, of late, that you can't, you basically cannot turn round. Um, can't say a thing, can exactly. you? Exactly. So now we Without have a little... reading something in the newspaper about somebody being fired or suspended yeah. or, or whatever, and even what's been There was happening. a teacher the other day who was suspended for misgendering a pupil. I didn't even know there was a verb. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So we've got little boys and girls wondering whether they really are little boys and girls, casting doubt. Remember, the whole thing about the rebellion against the natural order is to get you to doubt the wisdom of your senses. Mm -hmm. And if I was to say to the viewers, do you trust your senses? You know, everyone should put their hands up because you use your senses to cross a road. Yes, uh, it yeah, could be yeah. pretty messy if yeah. your senses weren't doing what they yeah. were supposed to get you across the road. Um, how about um, genetic modification of the food supply? In other words, well, nature's kind of brought us so far, but man's brilliance is going to come in. Mm -hmm. And here you see another very interesting element to the rebellion, and that is the deification of man's achievements. Have you noticed that science, which is great, I love science, science is technological progress, but now we have something called scientism, which is the religion of science. And this is the whole idea of deifying man's achievements, which, which is the classic definition of Satanism. You know, if you look at um, Anton LaVey and Gilmore and these other people that set up the Satanic Church, their whole thing is, well, true Satanism isn't worshiping the, worshiping the devil. It's accepting no higher power above you, not even Satan. So you're now free to be your own ultimate authority. Is that So happening? that's like being God. Yeah, is that happening is... in the world today? Yeah, it's happening because we're now almost patronizingly saying to the Lord, well, yeah, creation's fine, but we're going to improve upon it. We're going to put fish genes into tomatoes. We're going to put scorpion juice into cabbages. Mm -hmm. Why stop there? Why not put zebra genes into roosters? At least you'll end up with four-legged chickens with their own barcodes. <laughs> Definitely. I mean, the, the, the examples of the war you mentioned, some like the Jewish people, the rebellion against the uh, natural or order. And you were talking about the blurring of the sexes. I think blurring of lines in general, everything is fused into one. Nobody knows where they stand anymore. Nobody knows that there are no dividing lines. Um, and people are being told not to talk about it. Yes, which is even more worrying because as long as we're talking about something, you you know you run a risk of the truth coming out but if people are if if you it's very clever actually if you can get people um, too scared to open their mouth on certain subjects and if you think well we're not really at you know this is something out of a you know um a science fiction novel it's not really just put yourself in the position of you know we're not talking about here going out and spreading the gospel necessarily we're just talking about sitting in your hairdressers and somebody coming up with um, a subject whether it's a gender issue or um or whatever and how confident do you feel about giving your opinion even though you're convinced that you know what god thinks or what the bible says on a certain issue we're very, very scared now. It's not just any more a question. I don't think anyway, Philip, that, oh, we, we might look a bit silly. You, you run a risk of being vilified now, mm -hmm. whereas that wasn't the case before. People would have just thought... Well, that's, oh. that's never happened to me. <laughs> I bet it hasn't. <laughs> Let me tell you, were you educated or were you programmed? If you were in that waiting room we were looking at, if you were programmed, you'd just stand up. If you're educated, you'd be saying, hang on a minute, what's going on here? Mm -hmm. Why are we doing this? Yeah. But nobody did. Yeah. Or if they did, they didn't. Well, that's want to what we were seeing when we were watching. Yeah. So why would you know? Why would you not say to the people around you What's at some point, even if you joined in? Yeah. I I, mean, I was thinking it's easy to say, well, you know, I wouldn't join in on something. But if you did, I would want to know. I know me well enough. I would want to know. I'd be speaking to somebody. You know, what, what's actually going on here? Why are we mm. doing this? The interesting thing is, what would you do if the person next to you said, well, I don't really know. I'm just doing it because everybody else is. Would you at that point? then so, carry on doing it, just saying, well, we're all just right. doing it because somebody That's else right. is. That's right. This can have grave ramifications in a number of different areas. For instance, um, I'm often fond of saying you can be sincere and you can be sincerely wrong. And the majority is, in, is very often wrong. 
you know, look at evolution as a classic example of how people have just shut up and followed the, the line, believing that it's science and it has, it's, you know, evolution is a laughable far cry from science. And, but people are, are grabbing onto that. Um, I fell in with a couple of ladies when I was uh, starting my research career in California and they had worked for uh, quite a long time in the American intelligence industry. Mm -hmm. And they said to me, so you want to be a researcher? And I said, yes. And one of them said, forget about everything you ever learned. I went, OK, I understand that this is a grouching process and I'm the new boy and you're grinding me down a little bit. <laughs> Just tell me what they lied to me about and then we'll get on with it. And I'll never forget what she said. She said, everything. And she said it with a small smile. And you know what? She's long gone now. I mean, she was you know, in her 70s when I knew her. And here we are, 25 years on, and there's not a week goes by, I don't think to myself, wow, just how right you got that, because more and more comes out about the system, the system of, of the world system, each of us undergoing this time-limited training program to see whether we're going to stand up for the truth or not. And um, that's the key issue. How far are you prepared to go to stand up for the truth? Um, there's a couple of other areas that I know you wanted to touch on that um, I think are really uh, brilliant examples um, of this war. One thing that you talk about is natural chi childbirth versus routine cesarean. So obviously we're not talking here um, where it's an emergency, sure. but routine cesarean yeah. births now, which, yeah, yeah I mean, it's, yeah. it's an option. I mean, my view is you can, uh, as I said to my wife, you can have your baby swinging from a chandelier up, upside down if that's your thing. Um, but what's interesting is, and it's not necessarily that example, it's just look at how man gets involved right down the line with a whole bunch of different things which, which exemplify his brilliance, chemical medicine versus nutrition. Last year, last year, America spent $249 billion on type 2 diabetes. Now, type 2 diabetes is making the news these days because what we now know is that you can reverse type 2 very, very quickly in many cases with just diet and exercise. So my question is, why hasn't this made the front pages of every single newspaper in the world? That's good news. You know, if you take somebody who's insulin resistant and you start putting them on a specific type of diet, which we talk about, and have them run around the local park till they fall over, then they come out of that whole system very quickly. Yet we're not seeing that, for obvious reasons, being discussed because, unfortunately, sickness is the biggest business on earth. It's bigger than war, and you know how they spend on war. Mm. So when we look at this, if people go along with the herd, if you go along with what everyone else is doing, you're going to get what everyone else is getting, and certainly in the realm of that, it's not good news at all. So I don't say to, uh, I have a personal philosoph philosophy when it comes to the world system. Accept nothing, believe nobody, challenge everything. Mm -hmm. And I don't do that to be cussed or obstructive. I do that so I can get to the truth. Mm -hmm. And as a researcher, we were talking about confirmation bias earlier. Confirmation mm -hmm. bias is where you will only, as a researcher, accept information that backs up your preconceived ideas about what you think of the subject in hand. And we have to, as researchers, constantly check our confirmation bias and sometimes accept information that goes against what we've come up with previously. And what tends to happen is, the more you get published, the more you end up in a straitjacket, because now you are what I call irreversibly published, which is where you are unwilling to yeah. make a, a stand against what you've already put in print. Well, it, it's what you've put is more important than the truth now, because you've put it out because your name's on it. Yeah. You can't afford... Um, you don't want to have to you don't want a retraction. To you don't want, you don't to, want to retract it. Yeah, exactly. And there, there's the whole idea of you don't want anyone else to retract it, but you in particular don't want to have to retract yeah. what yeah. you said. Because there's the whole six, fear if about... Well, if you're 65 or 70, then you're going to let it slide. You're not going to get into it at this point. And constantly, when, I'm, when we're looking at what we thought to be true, let's say, in medicine or history, I mean, as I said to you before, they thought the Battle of Bosworth was fought two miles away from where it was actually fought. And there were people who were published on that. Now, if yes. Philippa Langley can find Richard III under a social services car park in Leicester, <laughs> then all bets are off for other yeah, aspects yeah. of history. It does make you wonder what else is out there. It, you know, that's and, constantly and the excitement I have. Been, yeah. You know, maybe where we've been duped either deliberately or, you know, 
or not deliberately, let me yeah. be kind. Um, you are watching Speaker's Corner with myself and Dawson. It is great to have your company. It's a brand new series and this is the very first programme in that series. If you want to get involved with us, I'm going to try and get my hands on that iPad in just a few seconds time um, and I'll read out some of your texts and your emails, but do uh, keep them coming in if you've got comments or questions. The question we are asking tonight is, were you educated or were you programmed? How do you genuinely feel about that? I mean, do you actually think, no, to be honest, I think I was educated. Um, you know, how would you answer that? What are your thoughts? Uh, do get involved because this is what the programme is all about. It, it wouldn't exist without your involvement, so it would be great to have you on board. If I ask myself, um, Philip, the question, was I educated or was I programmed? I would kind of think, well, I think I was educated in terms of maybe learning French or something or, you know, what's the capital city of France or, you know, there's certain aspects you think, well, that's, that's just, that's learning. That's, that's part of your education, but education goes further than just knowing facts about things. Education is giving you a very foundation, or yeah. it should be, for how to make sense of this world around us. And, and yet what, and are they doing in, what are they doing in universities today? They're setting up safe spaces. Oh, gosh. Right, you've heard of these. Safe spaces where the students can run off and hide yeah. so they don't get to hear people like me come yeah. along to challenge everything. Now, let me ask you a question. I mean, I was put through a pretty fancy education, but at the end of the day, what I was doing was reading books, then I was regurgitating what I had read in those books onto an exam sheet, yeah. and if I replicated pretty much what I did in the, in the, uh, what I read in the books, I'd get a high exam mark, and if I didn't, then I would, you know, fail. So we end up seeing a situation where people are being taught a curriculum, but the critical thinking goes out the window at that point because I would never have challenged any of my uh, professors or tutors, very learned men and women, who put me through my educational paces. But I think now I would, because humans put their pants on one leg at a time, right? And we often need to be reminded of that fact, you know? There's a, there's a whole... I love this um, 1 Timothy 6, 20 and 21. O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust. Avoid profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science falsely so called, which some professing have heard concerning the faith. And I was asked the other day, what's the best way of deprogramming yourself in the world? And my answer to that is God's word. Amen. It smacks it. It really does mm -hmm. when you go through. And this is part of the Origins project we're doing at the moment to kind of reveal that. Uh, absolutely brilliant. Um, just going to read out a few um, texts and emails if uh, if I can. Um, Tim Vince writes in. Tim, always a pleasure to hear from you. Uh, he writes in, absolute classic to see how peer pressure causes everyone to conform. A great problem in state schools for children of Christian families. Always great to see Philip and that's from Tim. So thank you very much for that, Tim. Um, we have Jill who writes in, hi Anne and Philip. When I was at school, I was educated but it's only within the last seven to ten years where the virtual has been introduced and as a form of mind control and artificial engineering. Um, that's very interesting and we'll come, in fact, let's just, just for a second there, mind control and artificial engineering. Where are we headed with this, Philip? Well, you've seen this whole thing blow up in uh, Mark Zuckerberg's face with Facebook and this is the idea of people committing all of their thoughts to social media and then that information then being passed on for whatever uh, gains on top of that and people are okay with that. Mm -hmm. So it's, a, it's uncharted territory. We've never been in a virtual world before. I mean, we, we think our, our thoughts are a virtual world, but it's so much more than that now. And I pulled up a, an American astrophysicist statement the other day, a guy called Neil deGrasse Tyson. Uh, he's, he's like an American Brian Cox. Now, when he comes out on stage on a talk show in America, uh, the whole audience just climbs to their feet and applauds him. You know, he's, he's a rock star, this guy, but he's an astrophysicist. He's got a famous statement. I'm going to read it to you. And I want you to point out the one word in this statement that mm -hmm. betrays the fact that Neil is the high priest of scientism in America. So here's the statement. He says, the good thing about science is that it's true whether or not you believe in it. The word is believe, yeah, belief, yeah. right? Not you believe science in isn't something you have to believe. Science either is, is or, or it isn't, not. right? Yeah. But yeah. scientism, the religion of science, 
In other words, not everything that sounds scientific is scientific. So the religion of science is basically saying we as high priests of, of scientism, we have our temples of higher learning, we have our creeds, and don't, um, if we give you that coveted PhD after your name, don't even think of blaspheming, blaspheming the holy creed of science. We're going to tell you what's true and what isn't, and if you don't believe it, so much the worse for you. So there's, a, there's an implied threat these days that you follow the status quo, you follow dogma, you know, the received wisdom, and you don't challenge it anymore. And that's the problem we've got in universities today because the whole purpose of science is to unhorse the truth. Yes. Not to be considered or obstructive because humans lie, humans get it wrong. But the trouble is we're so puffed up these days that we're not even gonna admit we're wrong when we are wrong because a lot of the time we're irreversibly published. And, and there's this, you know, when you were talking about, um, you know, safe spaces being created in universities, um, I, and I don't know who, who said it, I think it might have been Ravi Zacharias that said that the whole idea with um, a university, it actually comes from the terms that there should be unity in diversity. Therefore, it is a meeting of the minds that you can actually go to this institution and share these different ideas. And even if people are saying things that maybe you and I don't agree with, Philip, they have a right to do that. I know, but everyone gets so offended these days. Yeah, at all. No, so Thank you. So this of, whole offence so culture. Yeah, yeah, but it's, again, deliberately introduced to shut down debate. That's yeah. the whole purpose. I mean, you know it's a sad day when Jermaine Greer, right, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> who's, who's the queen of the counterculture, can't yeah. speak at universities these days, yeah. you know. Yeah. But now you get the renter mob show up and they start chucking bricks at you and, and shutting down um, talks mm -hmm. because they don't like what you have to say. And so that's uh, colouring the, the debate. And the timid among us back off when we should. Yes. We should be getting stuck in because this is truth and you've got to stand up for it. We, we do have to stand up for the truth and I think we, you know, we have to be not easier said than done um, according to what environment you frequent, but really not be, uh, not be shut down by the fear of being vilified. Um, and I think one of, the, one of the best ways of doing that really, uh, you know, is by asking, by asking the person who's doing that pertinent questions rather than arguing from where we're coming from mm -hmm. is to ask them questions about where they've accessed their information um, from because that can maybe help them see maybe where a few of the gaps are in their thinking because you never you can never get them to you you never get them round to your way by pointing out where they're wrong this you is, just have to this sort is, of ex it's exposure really that we need this is why i think satan's pulled off a master stroke because what he's done is he's got social media and the mainstream media to inflame passions to get people on fire with outrage over a whole range of subjects and he's created a system of people who are so greedy they're going to sell out to anything they'll sell out for power fame riches and Satan doesn't run for office. He's not on CNN or BBC saying, hey, I'm Satan and this is how it's going to be. No, no. What he's done is he's got some people who have sold themselves out and we've started believing in those people. And that's a dangerous thing. Rather than fix our eyes on the Lord, we're believing people now and we're praising people and yeah. science and all of these other things that are being lifted up as new gods for us. And do you think they know that? Do you think they realise what Some of doing? them do. Uh, some of them are doing it willingly. There's some pretty high-profile admissions. Yeah, in, by, in the music in industry. In the music industry, yeah. no names, but yeah. there's been some very, very surprising admissions to people who said, no, I sold my soul um, because I knew that's what was going to get me power, and here I am. And uh, you sit there and you think, how can you even be saying that? Yeah. They're dead serious about yeah. it. So they, you know, a lot of, the, especially in the music industry and also the film industry, there's a palpable evil that, that is sensed by people in these industries. Mm. And, you know, it does seep out now and then, but we've, we've, um, we've had some... And it's not necessarily, these are industries um, to be avoided. These are industries where more than ever, we do need to see an infiltration of the truth and you do yeah. need um, a light shining on that dark backdrop yeah. there to really expose a lot of what's, um, what's actually going on. Um, 
Another few emails coming through that I just want to, I'd love Elizabeth to write in. Again, Elizabeth, she writes in, how appropriate for me today, a perfect, sub, a perfect subject, just what I need. I was just wondering why, Elizabeth, <laughs> why particularly today? Was there a reason or is it just, oh, it's good to, it's good to see you back? Um, there's a couple of health questions coming in um, that, that isn't really what we're talking about tonight. We are talking about, you know, standing up for truth and, you know, where we educated or where we program but I will um, and maybe I will just read the first couple out and see where we go with them um, hi Philip our son is in his 30s and has had inflammation in his ears since Christmas how can he get rid of it well I've got two like this and then we will be very strict in just sticking to um, the subject on point well inflammation is always an indication that the immune system is working uh, on something and the winter just think about where we are in the year now we're coming out of a British winter we're coming out of um, uh, that we're all suffering the slingshot effect of a British winter as far as vitamin D deficiency goes. So the first thing I would do would be to get in vitamin D tested uh, and see where he is on the scale. He wants to be up around where the Bondi Beach lifeguards are on that scale, on a scale of zero to 300. He wants to be around 150 would be great, which brings his immune system online. So anybody who's uh, got suspicious creaks and groans coming out of a British winter, first thing on the list, Get, get the vitamin D vitamin, checked. Yeah. And get you the can, the NHS vitamin. has got, by the way, an excellent um, mail order test kit service. You don't even need to confront your doctor on any of it, uh, which is at vitamindtest.org.uk. Vitamindtest.org.uk. Okay. One of the great things the uh, NHS has got right. Excellent. Um, we've got another health question, then we'll go back on topic. Is it safe to take aspirin, Philip? I know it's not the subject, but I need to know, and that's from Julie. Depends what you're taking it for. Mm. Uh, is there a better way? Uh, again, we tend to kind of reach for these traditional remedies when sometimes we're not addressing the underlying cause. Mm -hmm. What we're trying to do is mop symptoms, which is not yeah. the same thing as trying to get uh, the mm -hmm. cure. So um, I always say the cure, for, well, we always used to think the cure for a hangover was paracetamol, and the cure for a hangover is don't drink in the first place, right? Yeah. <laughs> or, or drink water if you're going to have. Yeah. Uh, anything like that. That's so, a big fry up where I come from, but that's me giving the give go. away. There you go. <laughs> Bacon and egg and sausage. <laughs> first thing in the morning, but no, you're absolutely right. Um, the, the best cure for the hangover is not to get in that state in the first place, isn't it? Um, we we are, I mean, there, there's been a few coming on health, but we otherwise we'll go down a different uh, a different route entirely. I want to um, ask this, this is from Julian and it's a very good point. He says, what are your thoughts on transcendental meditation and Eastern thought as a way to God? Is this mind control? In my view it is, yeah. Uh, it's the whole idea there are many uh, ways to God and I think God's laid it down quite clearly that there's only one way to him and it's not through crystals and it's not through any other uh, way than his son Jesus Christ and I think once we fix on that yeah. but a lot of people say well that's that's exclusional that's this that you know and then we get the whole PC thing coming in on that mm -hmm. and um, if you're going to be a Lord's disciple then you need to be prepared to take flack because if you're not taking flack you're not over the target no. And You're not on the front line. That's this training program. You'll hear me say it over and over again. We are on a time limited training program under live fire conditions yeah. because God wants to see how we exercise yeah. our free will, whether we stand up for Him or against Him. And we see that all the time through the Old Testament. You go through the whole period of Judges. That's exactly yeah, that what's was going dire, on. dire, wasn't it? Yeah, it yeah. really was. Um, Gwen writes in, Hi, Anne and Philip. Uh, thank you so much for tonight's programme. I totally agree with what you're saying. I have sensed this for such a while now. I believe our children and grandchildren are being brainwashed in schools and universities, media advertising, etc. If we don't agree, we are not being, as they call it, politically correct. We no longer have a democratic country as our rights to free speech now will get us put in jail. And especially standing standing up for our Christian beliefs. This world has been turned upside down and as it says in God's word, they have exchanged my truths for lies. Absolutely. Yeah, Brilliant, spot Gwen. Spot on. Uh, Margaret writes in, hi, good evening to you both. This is something that is happening all around us and coming from many directions. Yes, the world is pressing in on the individual thought, free will. We are now being made to feel that we have to go with the majority. The control brainwashing is now in primary school and also even in some nursing 
groceries. I've seen it pick up speed and the frustrating thing is the lack of willing Christians to stand up for the truth. Yes, it's hard to be different, but I can tell you it is going to get harder. Jesus did warn that we will be persecuted um, for his namesake. Um, absolutely. Uh, Jeff writes in, fantastic to see you back and thank you very much and great to see Philip too. Enjoying tonight's show. Uh, your spiritual discernment is 100%. Uh, thanks so much. Um, I've definitely been programmed. How else would the wife get me unloading the dishwasher every night while she sits there doing nothing? Jeff, you've not lost your sense of humour. Absolutely not. But um, yeah, I mean, the general consensus is this isn't any surprise to the discerning out there. We we have a real sense. What what I'm aware of, though, Philip, um, these days, and, and even, you know, you don't have to have your nose in the Bible. You don't even have to have any form of um, belief system in terms of religion. To, to get a sense that something's really happening. It's always been happening. This is nothing new, but it seems to have spiralled out it's gone of up control. A few years. It's gone it up a few really years, has. Yeah. What, why is that? Let's talk about that for well, a sec. Well, the, the, the suspicion is that not much these days is given to you for free, but this programming is for free. Right? right yeah. And you're required to submit your children to it, and if you don't, social services will come knocking. So what we need to understand what we understand as christians with the, with the spirit in us is we understand there is a war going on often when i'm doing my talks one of the first things i'll say is hands up who has noticed who's worked out that there's a war going on and you're on enemy turf and they all like look at you as if to think well, you know, <laughs> who's this nut job who's just walked in <laughs> but then you get about four or five hands come yeah. up you know and at the end i ask them that question again and then all the hands come up because they because I have just programmed them. No, I haven't. I've, ex <laughs> I've actually shown them what's been going on, yeah. and all of a sudden, they're staring at it. You know, when you give them example after example after example, and this is what we're doing in the Be Wise, Be Well tour, um, I'm showing people how they're being programmed, and once they see it, they go, okay, now I get it. And incidentally, um, you know, do get yourself along. Philip's tours um, are absolutely brilliant. I've taken many people along. And you know what? If you're thinking, yeah, but I already did that. I did that like two years ago or I went on one wherever. Listen, every time there is added new information. And you know what? The, the pieces that are repeated need to be repeated. They really, truly do. Uh, be Wise, Be Well is the title of this year's um, Philip Day UK 2018 tour. And you can go on to www.credence.org and you can see where Philip is going to be coming to a town near you. And can I also say, whilst you're on the website, you may want to check out um, Philip's books, particularly the Origin series. Uh, they are absolutely fantastic. And I know that you're still. This was this is a huge project it's, that you on you've it's undertaken. It's mammoth, yeah. Um, the the one we're currently working on, Origins Four, spans the period between Solomon and uh, Hadrian, so it goes right the way through the Lord's ministry, and it's just incredible how much stuff is coming out now. Just when you start linking bits of of history together, see that's the other thing about history is that history is more or less written by the winners. Um, so we've got to start going back in and accepting and challenging, accepting nothing and challenging everything about what we're told. And this is what I think is so fascinating about the Bible because there is no contrary evidence against the information that's in the Bible that's mm. ever been presented and, and been found to be valid. And I find that absolutely amazing. That's un unearthly when you think about it. It is indeed. Um, another comment here. I'm not sure who this is. Uh, there's no just initials here. But um, thank you. Um, it says, very interesting program with Philip. Um, is truth in your life necessary for one's good health? That's a great question. It is a great question, a, isn't it? Uh, can you live the lie? Um, you can live with a dirty hand so long as you keep it in the dark. So some people are able to fool themselves all the time. Uh, that's really a measure of the man or woman you are. So that's a difficult, but I, I always think the truth is the truth, whatever jacket it's wearing, yeah. Yeah. and we need to stand up for it. And you're gonna catch flack for doing that because you're in a system of lies. The whole system we're in, in the world system is Satan's system, it's full of lies. Now you, you've got um, a lovely little girl and she's now nine. We were talking earlier, you said going on 18. Yeah, well, yeah. We'll keep her at nine for the moment. In, in primary school, we were hearing, and even in nurseries, yeah. um, they're being programmed at a very, very young age. Um, I, I think it was somebody, I'm looking through the emails here, somebody was writing about, um, somebody once said, if you, can, if you can actually get a hold of a child at 
two years old, you can virtually train them in anything. Shall I give you that quote? It's yeah. Vladimir Lenin. There you go. That Here it is. Give me just one generation of youth <laughs> and I'll transform the whole <laughs> it's world. It's clearly you that said it, not an email. Because I go through them in the order that they're coming in. So, um, yeah. Where do you think particularly, well, what would you say, um, say, for example, nursery, five-year-old, six-year-olds, where's the big push in terms of what, what are they trying to program into those little ones at the moment? Well, I said to Anna, uh, I said, they're going to teach you that you evolved from a monkey, Anna. And she goes, I, I know, I've been hearing you say uh, talk about that. So I said, do you kind of get up in class and go, no, this is complete rubbish, you know, all nine years of you? Or do you just go along with it and you uh, do the exam and get all of the uh, marks that you want and the grades you want and then you flush it? Is that what you do? So that's an individual question. Um, I've always, I think the older I get, the more uncompromising I become with it. Mm -hmm. I was prepared to go along with it just to fit in and just to, to go. I think many of us just go the path of least resistance. Yeah. We, we do it with our families, you know. So you've got believers in families and unbelievers in the same families. And you know the subjects that are hot buttons that you don't really want to get into because it's just going to blow the whole stuff yeah. up, you know. Yeah. So you just yeah. shut up and don't do a thing. But then there comes a time when you don't, when you can no longer keep quiet. Yeah. And sometimes, um, sometimes it's easier to actually speak in front of, sta of strangers and, and state your beliefs there yeah. than it is to do with those closest to you. Often people say to me, especially in the realm of health, how do I explain this to a loved one? And I go, you don't because you uh, are the problem. Well, you're not a problem, you're just too close to them. Yeah. And they're not going to take it from you. So what you want to do is you want to say something like, um, when you're asked, well, what did you get up to over the weekend? Oh, I went to a talk on health. Wow, watch this. Throw down a copy of the Food Matters DVD and walk. Well, don't, like, wa don't walk if you just arrive for dinner, but, yeah. you know, just let them look at... You see, they've been programmed through the TV, right? Yeah. So what you're going to do is you're going to give them the correct information through the same mode of programming that gave them the junk stuff. But without pressure. But without pressure. You're because not even in the... That took you four and a half seconds to say to that. Hey, I went to a talk on health the other day. Mm. Wow. Watch this. Mm -hmm. Throw the copy of the DVDs. The DVDs work great because on them you've got professors and doctors and scientists all saying the stuff. So you don't have to get into the two-hour speech. If you do get into the two-hour speech, we're going to find you tomorrow morning in the broom cupboard, swathed in bubble wrap. <laughs> no, but it, it, it is so true. It, it, it's... When there's no resistance, when no, it, it, even like in, in, in sales, nobody likes to be sold anything. We all want to be buyers. We all like to think, I chose to buy this lawnmower yeah. or I chose to buy. Nobody wants to be sold anything. And, and that goes with, I mean, sales is just the science of persuasion. That's all it is. And so if you're trying to persuade somebody to do something or to open up their mind to something, the best way to get them to do it is for them to think that they, they yeah. change their mind yeah. not you re-educated them uh, you know and that's fine for when we're talking with loved ones or we're talking with people out there but what about what about ourselves I mean you mentioned beforehand that um, you know the best way to deprogram ourselves is really to get into the Word of God but also you were talking about trusting your senses yes just talk a little bit about that because I think that's really vital these days well, uh, if you have the Lord's Spirit in you, you are being guided, and what's worth, and that's what prayer's about. Prayer's two-way communication straight to the throne room where we can put us, uh, present the Lord with the situation we find ourselves in, which he's already seen, and say, oh, what's the best way out of this? You know what fascinates me more than anything um, is I first looked at the Bible when I was younger, and I thought, why all these stories in there? I mean, you know, why, why can't they just lay out the truth of it so you can write it on the back of a beer mat? Why has it got to be a big, thick book? And the answer is because what God's doing there is he's showing so many different situations, all the kaleidoscopic camera angles of all of the different aspects of human nature, and there it is. And, and you know, whether you're dealing with Joshua or Samson or whether you're dealing with David or Solomon or all the way down, what you're looking at there are the, the predicaments they find themselves in. There's nothing new under the sun. These, mm. are, these are situations that are going on today. You know, we have trouble with our, our sons or daughters or fa family. Um, how do we get out of debt? Um, how do we get out of a war situation? You know, these are all explained, and God walks you through them all. It's, an, it's so comforting when you actually see how these situations... I just love the way um, God deals with the world system. Um, it, says he, uh, it says that um, the adulterers and adulteresses know you not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. 
Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. Well, that's strong stuff when you yeah. think about it, because who made the world? Yeah. God did. Yeah. But you see, the problem, well, how we got into this predicament is because God is love. You can't have love without free will. So we were given free will, which is simultaneously the greatest curse and the greatest blessing. Mm -hmm. Because we have that free will to decide what tie to put on, what dress to put on, um, whether we love God or whether we hate him. That's the whole thing. You know, love is a messy business when you look at how free will operates within it. And that's the, yeah, nature, that's the nature of the world we live in. It is. And, and, you know, at the end of the day, we can go right back to the Garden of Eden. And, you know, um, classic free will. You know, you can either do what God suggested or you can go another route. Yeah. Chose to go another route yeah. and, and look what's happened ever yeah. since. Yeah. And, you know, really going down that different route is choosing like you were saying at the start of the program philip it's choosing to become our own gods it's choosing yeah. to be god ourselves and you know looking back at the tower of babel you know that's well i just you know you're just amazing because i've just looked at this verse here and it says and the lord said behold the people are one they have all one language and this they begin to do this bit and now nothing will be restrained from them that they imagine to do in other yeah. words yeah. you know that's the power that we've yeah. been given that but when we do it outside of God, then we are deifying ourselves. Yeah. But even then, God moves in and stops it. And the interesting thing, even as Christians, sometimes we can do that. You know, yeah. we, we, we can, you know, we, we see, we've got to watch our hearts because we can say with our mouths that, you know, we can say all the right things. But, you know, that throne in our heart, who's sitting on it? And yeah. sometimes we find that we kind of like creep back on it and we are in charge. And... Uh, we've got to be really, really careful. We really do into, you know, basically, I'm not putting a whole list of rules and regulations on anybody or a big heavy burden on anyone, but you know what, to get up in the morning and to say, Lord, I'm putting my hand in yours, walk me through this. I want to, I want to be navigated by you. I want to go where you want me to go. I want to talk to who you want me to talk to, say and think. If that is a genuine, nobody's going to live a perfect life, but if that is the genuine attitude of your heart and you keep your head in his word, it's going to be more difficult for us to be programmed, surely. Yes, because what God wants at the end of the day and the cure, the cure for everything we've spoken about in this program is a relationship with him. Yeah. It's a relationship. It is. And if you look at those terrifying verses in what Matthew 7, 21 to 23, yeah. I never knew yeah, I you. Never knew I you. never had a relationship with yeah, you. Yeah, I never knew you. Not, I used to know you, and yeah. now I don't. Never did. I never knew you, yeah. in the, which means I never, we, there was never a relationship yeah. in the yeah. first place, which is, again, yeah, very, very scary for many, many um, people who will be, you know, Lord, Lord, but didn't we do this, didn't we do that? That, I mean, yeah, they are very sobering words. Uh, Maggie writes, um, hello both, I've read all the Origins book and can't wait for Origins 4. Uh, hurry up, Philip, <laughs> she's saying. Um, Today we heard of increasing violence in London and so many um, counties are at loggerheads, uh, countries I think she means are loggerheads. Um, we can see the jigsaw of Ezekiel 38 fitting together for the first time in history. Our our, um, our redemption is near. Uh, we've got another one. Totally agree with you. It is shocking uh, that um, Christian people of common sense are now an endangered species. Um, this is a really good comment here. We must question everything and be bold and uh, beware of false doctrines, as Jesus told us in no uncertain terms. Love your program. God bless those who stand for truth on Revelation TV. And I think absolutely that it is true. It's so, so important to be standing for truth. Another area, because I'm, I'm well aware of how quickly the time always flies by when you um, come into the studio, Philip. But one thing, and we spoke about this on the phone earlier today, I, there's been more and more of a push, self-help programs, you know, um, self-esteem, self-worth. I think the clue there is in the first word there. So, yes. <laughs> exactly, you know, that, that kind of gives it away. But never before can you go into um, a bookstore, or very few of us do that these days, we might be going online to buy our books, but you put in, you know, you type in whatever, and you will have a wealth of information come up. Not all of that is good. There are, there's, there's some things that are more important in this life than how we feel about ourselves, surely. Two, there is the truth. Two words, yeah. respice finem, bit of Latin here, respice yeah. finem. It's often used as a motto for schools. It means know your final outcome, mm -hmm. which is very sobering. 
And I take great heart from the book of Acts because when you saw how, when you see how those disciples or the apostles uh, go out with boldness, as, as the email just said, going out with boldness, mm -hmm. knowing that they have the truth and knowing that they can present it and knowing their final outcome, knowing that all of them, I think, except John, perished for their yes. belief. Yes, I mean, what beliefs. greater testimony have you got for the truth than that? And I'm not saying that we, maybe some of us will be martyred, but I think what we, what we look at on a day-to-day -day basis is we come back to the relationship. Don't want to be programmed by Satan's system? You don't have to be. Have a relationship with God, have him walk with you. He comes with me in my van. Um, he's with me on my tours, he's with my family, he's looking after my family right now. And that's settled. I don't have to worry about that anymore. I can just, you know, how nice not to even have to worry about any of that. Yeah, he's, you know, people say, you know, a lot of people say, well, God is in control, and, and, and yes, that's true, but God, I quite like God's in charge. I quite like that. Um, control, sometimes, just even the word, we've been talking about it, control. He doesn't control me, but he, he is ultimately in charge That's half of the things. problem. <laughs> yeah, yes, half exactly. the problem is that we have our free will and we're yes. messing up all the time. Yeah. But that's, he's, um, you know, when you look at the fantastic eternity he has in store for us, this is the training program for that, I truly believe. If only you, we had a glimpse, you know, yeah. that, that glimpse of eternity. I, I wonder how much weight we would put on this world if we really could just for a second, you know, just get a, a whiff of what it's going to yeah. be like. I think you'd say three words, I get it. Yeah. And that's the whole point. So we have to, uh, you know, it's hard for some of us out there now. I know yeah. it is. You know, we've got family situations, money situations. We're frightened. But I tell you what, there's a whole bunch of this satanic nonsense that's going out through the media, through social media, and, you know, in the whole virtual world as well as the real world. And, you know, come back to my gran. It's not true until you can see it from your garden gate. If you can start with that, then a whole bunch of stuff just sloughs off and you don't have to deal with it anymore. And, and that there's tremendous, you know, relief in that as well. You know, I, I, I love the way that hopefully tonight things have been kind of simplified. It, it's quite complex out there. It's become very complicated and, you know, nothing seems as straightforward as it used to be. And what hopefully we've done is demystify a lot of the stuff. That, you know, let's keep it simple. It's about a relationship. It's about a relationship with Jesus Christ. It's about you keeping your head in your Bible, you looking up every morning thinking, I'm going where you want me to go. You've got a purpose for my life. And and that and it's it's a good plan. That doesn't mean his plan is that you drive a Cadillac and you know live in a mansion or whatever. But all things are going to work for good to them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Now, that includes you and me, and that includes so, so many of you out there as well. So we, need, we don't have to worry. we just got to do the right thing. We really have, and he, he's got your back. Mm -hmm. And that, that is awesome. It's like I'm talking myself into this. But it is. It's really, really good. It's very, very reassuring. I think we've probably got time for maybe one more. It says... Um, no name on this one, but hello, lovely Christians. Um, great to be in your like-minded company. Um, treasured are those times. Um, oh, I'm sorry, this is just a little bit, it's probably the typo thing in predictive text. Um, she's talking about schools, or he's talking about schools across Canada, indoctrinating children into accepting all the whole sort of cross-dressing cross transgender. Well, they, uh, is it in Canada that they've just passed legislation that it's a criminal offence? There's a big hoo-ha mm -hmm. with Jordan Peters about, you know, using the, um, the incorrect pronoun. Misgendering. I mean, yeah, exactly. The verb Love that, that. You were I'm going to use that about. word four times tomorrow. I'm yeah, gonna, brilliant. <laughs> I'm going to say about my daughter, you're misgendering. <laughs> You're misgendering the dog. Yeah, yeah. but it, it, that is, this is the world that we're in now. It's laughable. It's, you can, you know, have a sense of humour yeah. and laugh at it because yeah. that's it. It's just nonsense. It, it really has is. gone absolutely crazy and it, it's amazing to think how did we get from, how did we get to this point because even a few years ago, the distance that we've travelled has been phenomenal yeah. in a heartbeat, which begs the question, where are we going to be? in a few years time from now and I
I really do think it's got to be a question of hang in there, hang in there with your Bible, get as much information as you can. Go and visit um, Philip Day on his tour as well. Be wise, be well. That's another way that you can stay deprogrammed and take advantage of the website to getting those Origins books that um, the lovely viewers um, were complimenting you on. Philip, good luck with Origins 4. Um, thank you so much for coming in and taking time to be with us and the grand opening of another series of Speaker's Corner, so we, we do appreciate you uh, very, very much indeed. Uh, we'll be back next week at the same time, same place, and my guest is going to be Peter Hockley from Oxford Bible Church. You may remember him from the last series. He's going to be talking about what happens in